and good day to you. This is Thomas Keegan. Um, this is, uh, I'm Hi, Thomas. Yeah. Um, hey, I have a good space guy here on the line, and of course I'm with libertarianprogressive.com, and um, now, of course, we're in the pursuit of interviewing as many independent and third-party candidates uh, for 2012 and perhaps beyond, but right now we're focusing on 2012, and today's date is June the 29th, 2012. It's a Friday, and... Um, and so we want to do all these interviews to show people that uh, they have an option. And um, we hope to get as many interviews of independents, third party people, um, and people uh, on, on the ballots. And that's, I think, after hearing the interview, you, you, uh, it might make one consider that um, they have a better choice than the typical Republican and Democrats. So here today, I'm interviewing Good Space Guy. He is on the ballots. Uh, for 2012 as a candidate for Congress from Washington State, uh, District Number 7. And uh, pleased to meet you, good space guy. Uh, it's a pleasure. How's it going tonight? Yeah, yeah I'm ple pleased to talk to you. You, you caught me uh, on the phone just as I was leaving one of our local libraries here in King County. Uh, we, we have an excellent library system here. and. Uh, uh, Well, excellent, sir. And um, well, it's uh, it's good to meet someone new. May, may I ask you that I've been asking pretty much the same framework of questions, but how people answer it can be um, totally different. Uh, we usually start out with um, how what motivated you or, or what drives you to um, be a candidate um, where you felt like, um, you know, instead of just being a bystander, I'm going to actually um, uh, show assertiveness and, and, and see if um, y you know uh, people would want me to represent them instead of the same you know kind of representation people have probably been receiving for an awfully long time from the Republicans and the Democrats. Well, uh, I'm a uh, amateur astronomer and an amateur economist, and I see so many solvable problems. Uh, in our society that aren't being solved. Uh, for example, unemployment and uh, tremendous uh, waste and destruction caused by big government. And so uh, it seems to me that since we live in a citizen-led country, that I as a citizen should step in uh, since I see so many solutions uh, to the problems that we're facing. Uh, 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 the, the two big uh, problems I've been focusing on are uh, the lack of production that lowers our living standard, uh, which of course is the same thing as the unemployment that lowers our living standard, and the tremendous waste in my favorite government program, which is the U.S. space program. You know, I see a lot of potential, too. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's just when you said that, it kind of made me feel like, wow, that's um, a good point. Uh, and um, so it, there's a lot of th things could be a lot better, huh? They, I mean, people are short. It's kind of short-sighted um, to be, uh, you know, thinking that I'm going to go out and vote for Republican and then Democrats. I, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't want to offend anybody, but I, I mean, <laughs> it, if, if you knew what possibilities there could be, um, then uh, then you might, you know, then you might have that opinion instead. Yeah, uh, there, there's uh, our living standard is so much lower than what it could be, and uh, it's just. The bigger the government, uh, actually, the, the people, the voters promote big government by voting for the big spending candidates. And the big spending candidates automatically uh, vote for big government uh, programs, which often uh, turn out to be boondoggles and waste uh, and destruction. For example, uh, in the um, U.S. space program, uh, we actually held back and allowed the backward Soviet Union to be the first leader in the space program. So you're telling so, me there's waste in the government? Oh my gosh. A tremendous, a tremendous waste and, and purposeful destruction. Uh, for example, in the U.S. space program, we, we had the successful first uh, American space station called Skylab, uh, 
we spent uh, a lot of taxpayers' money to put it up in orbit. So that was a beautiful thing. And then instead of keeping it in orbit, when it costs so much money to put it in orbit, uh, we allowed it to fall back to Earth and be destroyed. Uh, and we've done so, so much of that with our, our space program. Uh, for example, we went from the successful Saturn V rocket, which gave us the capability to go to the moon and Mars and... Uh, and um, with the Saturn V rocket, we, we did go to the moon, and we could have gone to Mars, but we discontinued it. Uh, now, wait, and, now, a lot of people, some people, and I, you know, and I don't even think these are real people, but pundits, I'll say, pundits, this is what pundits would say. Uh, pundits would say, you know, what's all this space talk? Um, y y y you know, but to be quite honest, how many movies have we had about outer space? The, the, the space talk is this. It's the same thing that things that people were having, like a young Christopher Columbus kind of had when he was a kid of going to like a new world, maybe. Same I mean, thing. Yeah, it's exact same thing. And, 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 and you know what? That might have caused the Renaissance itself, just people knowing that they have like a, another route that they can take and, um, and, and, and maybe, you know, discover a land that's filled with treasure and, uh, and, you know, and plenty. Yeah, uh, the Spanish under the leadership of the Italian Christopher Columbus and the Portuguese at the same time competing with the Spanish really opened up the world to, uh, to uh, trade. Yeah. So the Sp Spanish and the Portuguese at the end of the 1400s, beginning of 1500s, uh, really opened uh, access of Europe to the entire world. So the Spanish went around Africa to the uh, Spice Island. I mean, they discovered chocolate. Um, you know yeah. how big Nestle is? Have you ever taken a look at the stock of Nestle? People are saying like Google and, and Apple and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nestle is like, you know, I think like a lot bigger than, than even those companies. Chocolate is, and, and they discovered that in the new world. That was the gold and, um, and lots of other things too, tobacco and et cetera. Yeah, so, so the, the living standard of the world, or, or parts of the world, really went up with the, uh, the developing of uh, uh, yeah, there's movement. W w world trade across the Atlantic and across the Pacific, and uh, that, that was a tremendous breakthrough that uh, Columbus led. And it, it's, it, it's sort of amazing to me that he was an Italian uh, that uh, uh, went, went to Spain and then had the Spain uh, open up the, the world uh, rather than the Italians. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, uh, but I guess the, uh, the Spaniards were closer to America than Italy, so, so in a way it does make sense. Yeah. Uh, and um, we're, we're, um, we're close to space now. Space is not far away. It's only about uh, a little over 200 miles up uh, um, to our I, International Space Station. Well, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you could say in a sense it, it pays for itself, or it, or it has so far. I guess nothing's guaranteed, but... Um, there's been so many, you know, innovations that have gone into the private sector. They should let more of it into the private sector, and, um, and and you know, they should have tourism up there too with private the private sector. But they're, you know, you, you can make a case. I mean, that um, uh, you know, a mission to Mars, discovering things, uh, you know, more missions to the moon, and um, and just seeing what's up there and exploring it and, and making it seem more kind of normal to, to, to be doing that and um, that could be like you know in the next internet um, you, you know like in the 90s we had the uh, you know the internet um, revolution or whatever and uh, n space could be um, you know uh, it's something like that I mean that could be a huge industry one day huge huge is the correct word so so uh the uh, century that uh, the 20th century that just ended you create a lot of jobs right uh, all right uh, productive useful desirable jobs right. it's easy to uh, create jobs it's hard to create jobs that the consumer wants and uh, the uh, the full employment that i want is through productive jobs desired by the consumer well here's something so, that i like the three what are the 
like the main um, uh, expenses for people, um, well, taxes is one thing, um, property and um, food and I guess energy, those three things, um, it, you know? Yeah, and uh, so, so we're standing uh, on the, well, in the 20th century, we went from the horse and buggy age to the beginning of the space age. And now in this new 21st century that we are, and we can go uh, into the age of space colonization. Actually, the very uh, space colonization should have been the goal from the very beginning of our space program. If, if a space colonization had been the, the goal from the very beginning of our space program, we would have had a lot less waste. For example, uh, we switched over to the space shuttle from the successful Saturn V rocket. Now, how do we uh, prevent, like, bad, like, you know, I'm sure there will always be some bad mistakes, but how do we prevent, how do we reduce the amount, like, significantly reduce the amount of, like, um, you know, just bad decisions? Well, uh, big government automatically includes many bad decisions. I mean, it's so just bigger, electing the right persons, the government. right? Yeah, I mean, say, say that again? It's electing the right persons, people that um, have, like, a, you know, um, uh, you know, some different uh, values as far as uh, standards go and, and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, so I, I agree. It's really important to elect the small spender rather than the big spender. When you, when you elect a small spender who understands economics, you're electing a person who will go into less uh, uh, tax-wasting boondoggles. Uh, when you elect a big spender, they're going all the time. The elected officials who are big spenders by nature automatically go into many boondoggles and giveaways. So how do you uh, present waste? Like, would you go on the floor and, and like, um, give like facts and proof and, and, and try to investigate waste and stuff like that, or bring it to well, it, it, it? It starts with the voters. Yeah. The, the, the voters, uh, when they vote for the person whose lawn sign they, they see, they're voting for a big spender. What kind when of they, congressperson uh, would you be? I'm sorry to interrupt, but that uh, is a question that just popped to my mind. Um, what kind of a, a congressperson do you think you would be? Sir? Like, yeah, uh, well, well so, uh, so, since... Facts. Since I understand economics better than most elected officials, uh, I would be the uh, kind that would uh, vote for programs uh, in which that put the consumer first. So uh, I, I wanted partnership between the uh, Do you mind the, if I uh, read off past bills and you can let me know if you'd vote for them or not? Like SOPA and PIPA? Well, uh... Uh, I, I think it's better to stay with the broad concept rather than go into individual bills. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the broad concept is uh, that the consumer gets most benefit when the consumer can keep more of uh, his or her earnings. So by uh, starving government uh, and uh, keeping the tax bill to the consumer low, we keep purchasing power with the consumer. So the, the, the number one thing is that we work for each other in our exchange economy. So uh, each person finds what uh, they can do best uh, that is desired by the consumer. And that helps to raise the living standard when each uh, person seeks out the work that they can do best that is desired by the consumer, as opposed to uh, work that is desired by a planner on some uh, weird project that uh, will not benefit well, I think uh, the people. Yeah, the reason that you're right about this is because, I mean, if all the government ever did was, you, you know, help old ladies across the street and, and, and um, you, you know, able to make wise decisions in times of emergencies and, and stuff like that, um, but if you know we could do without you know the, the part where they're raiding like small businesses and stuff over silly little things selling orchids that are you know how would anyone even know that they're illegal or whatever and then um you know gibson guitars and uh just people's houses and invading civil liberties just spending money creating some kind of um 
police state that uh, I don't think a lot of people appreciate, um, being, especially being spent with their own tax dollars. It seems like all the weapons from Iraq and overseas, you know, they're like, okay, well, you want to withdraw, then we'll just, you know, bring all the weapons here. Mm. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's just so many destructive programs. Like war is such a destructive program. There, yeah. There's better better ways to spend tax money. For, first, we we should leave as much of the tax money with the uh, with the people rather than taking it away from them. And when we do do take uh, money away from the people in taxes, we should be very careful on how we spend it. Yeah. Instead of spending it on war, uh, war blows off legs and blows off arms. Instead of uh, spending uh, tax dollars on war, it's better to uh, fight the war of ideas through our embassies. So instead of uh, fighting wars uh, with our military, I prefer to concentrate on fighting war with our embassies. Uh, with, uh, yeah, we should we uh, should debate these, you, you know, um, these you know, bad people over, you, you know, in some of these countries and. and um, and then we should also clean up our house here and, and make sure that when we do um, engage them about civil liberties and things like that, that we're also holding up our end of it and, and set an example, right? Yeah, I think that's quite important, that uh, we should set the example. This, this is how you build a higher living standard, and we should prove it by saying, well, look at us. We, we have one of the world's fastest uh, rising living standards. We don't. But we should have, and the reason we don't have one of the world's fastest rising living standard is uh, we've elected people to power who have sabotaged uh, our economy. For example, and they control most... everything. They've like zoned and districted everything, and it's like people can't like um, just you know go out and drive out into the wilderness and just set up a spot and call that you know and, and build there or, or whatever there's all these ordinances and roadblocks i mean there you know there probably does could be an argument for some kind of organization to everything but um but uh it, it's it's not um i mean imagine a house like you know, the future where someone can build and then they can have sustainable like uh energy free energy like from solar um or something that you know can be uh, self-sufficient, and um, and then a lot more like uh, local small business foods and stuff like that, not having to pay property taxes, and that would um, make the 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 you know the the, the need for it would reprioritize some of the needs um, that uh, people expect um, and, and yeah. reduce well, some uh, of the stress. Well, I, I want the people to prior prioritize their needs. So the consumer, by deciding where they're going to spend their money, each, each consumer individually deciding where he or she's going to spend his or her money, uh, does the prioritizing. So that's the prime prioritizing. And uh, when when they allow the big spenders to take their their money away from them in taxes, they're uh, ceding this right to the planners. Well, the thing the is, planners usually if, get it wrong. If they had to tax people, this pr people would probably outrage. If they if they actually taxed us the amount that it costs to pay this budget, um, uh, people would be very much more upset. I think they are now. But what they're doing is just borrowing, pr printing that money, like trillions of dollars too. They're not just you know doing a million dollars or anything like that. They're doing like trillions of dollars. So. Yeah. Inflation is huge. We're borrowing money for this huge military industrial complex. Not to say we couldn't have like the strongest defense, but we, you know, there's we could definitely cut a huge amount um, because that's taxing us. Yeah. Now, 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 it's important that we show the world the example. So if if we want to fight wars through our embassies instead of through our military, and uh, and promote the world, uh, increase the world living standard, one of the best ways to, to show the world that our living standard is increasing. And uh, uh, to do so, we have to unsabotage our economy. For example, 
uh, generally in our competitive free market, and the competitive free market works for you, the consumer. Uh, in the competitive free market, we normally set prices by the law of supply and demand. But when uh, government uh, comes in, and in this case, it's a government backed by the opinions of the majority of the people, uh, when they establish a minimum wage, they, uh, they sabotage our economy and throw many people out of work so that the people thrown out of work are not contributing to the production that raises our living standard. It's the production of goods and services that raises our living standard. And so when a minimum wage is established and supported by the people, the people don't realize that they're actually harming production and lowering the living standard. So so you do uh, care uh, about, I mean, that's your, it seems like economics is one of your main passions here. The, know, the, the, uh, the science of economics is the foundation of our living money? standard. Let me ask you this. I mean, you know, it's 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 an old question, right? Um, mm -hmm. do you, can you? I mean, it, and it's a tough question. I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Geez, I, I bet um, you know your opponents couldn't answer this. But what, um, do you, do you have an opinion on you know what you think money is? Well, money is our medium of exchange. We accept uh, paper money, for example, uh, which is called fiat uh, money. It, 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 it's money because we say it's money. We accept it because in our experience, we can take these pieces of paper, these IOUs, and other people will accept it from us uh, to get uh, goods and services. Mm -hmm. So uh, so uh, we sell our, our labor for uh, these uh, scraps or uh, notes of, of paper, and with it, other people ex accept uh, these uh, pieces of paper as a symbol of value. So money is a symbol of value, a record of value, it's an IOU, and it, it enables us to engage in the exchange economy. Now the pioneers, they usually were primarily in a one person do it yourself economy, but the living standard is much higher when we engage in an exchange economy in which we develop special skills. All right. So should we have competing currencies? Should we go back to the way it was before the Bretton Woods, before Nixon um, you know, took us off the gold standard? Or should we do something brand new um, and have like a silver standard or um, mixed metals standard? Or um, what, 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 what do you think, um, or any of those? Do you think uh, just any of those? What, what, you know, um, what would you propose? Okay. Uh, uh, many economists. Uh, many economists. Fed, like, or there's another. Should we have the Fed become part of the Treasury and then just um, lend money to people directly? Well, uh, the, 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 that's a really difficult question. The, the uh, many economists are, str are struggling uh, with this. Whether we should be on a gold standard or continue on, on this. Uh, flexible uh, standard. Uh, what I object to is the current system uh, leads to inflation, and the inflation is terrible. It wipes out the savings of people. So is the first uh, priority just to cut spending? I mean, just to get a budget, like a balanced budget, is, is that... Well, yes. yeah, different people have different priorities. My, my priority is to decrease the size of government. Uh, so... Uh, people can uh, retain more of what they earn rather than hand it over to the uh, to big government to be wasted. So by its very nature, when big government takes in taxes from the people, a lot and of what they take... privacy. Do you, do you feel like our governments are, in, you know, invading people's privacy? Nowadays? Yes, that, that, that's part of what I mean when I say big government. Yeah. So, so a big government interferes with the lives of the people. We have over 7 billion people on our planet, which I refer to, to as Spaceship Earth. And with over 7 billion people on space. the planet, we really don't have to worry about uh, uh, becoming a depopulated planet uh, when individuals make wrong decisions. So I say individuals have the right to make wrong decisions with their lives. 
individual. All right, now here's the ultimate question, like about this, because I have a lot of libertarian things, and I believe in volunteerism, so I don't believe in forcing people to do anything. But mm -hmm. I do think that, um, like, what if though, like, I think you know, like the uh, oil spills, like, what if a company causes more damage than they could ever pay back? Well, that that's that proper role of government to. Uh, uh, protect the environment. Uh, so it makes sense, but uh, government has to be careful not to use false science. So, right, right. So, like the, uh, yeah, they you do use a lot of false science, and um, definitely, I mean, yeah. look at the FDA and uh, and some of the drugs that get approved and some of the ones that aren't, and um, and just the way they're micromanaging and 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 they cost like a million dollars for a company to bring like a drug onto the market and stuff. It's yeah, that's uh, that's excessive. Yeah. So so uh, uh, so the uh, the individual citizens has a responsibility if they want good government to watch the government to watch what the government is doing. So the more the individual citizen uh, watches what government is doing, they become more aware of the waste uh, of government and the uh, of programs that they would disagree with. Should everything uh, the government do be on, I mean, except maybe some very top secret national security, but that should have access to our representatives at least. Um, but I mean, you know, should everything they do be out open in the public, like on C-SPAN and stuff like that? I know a lot of it is, but yeah, to to, to uh, remain read the deep. bills before you pass them. Would you promise to read the bills before passing them? <laughs> Those bills are so voluminous; it's impossible. Mm. Uh, so you have to go by advice. Uh, if, uh, if people just can't read read those. Laws that are like books, you just can't read them. Uh, and so with smaller government, it becomes more manageable. Uh, so with big government... So would you uh, vote no on a lot of bills, do you think? Like, I think I would. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I watched local government here, and it just amazes me the uh, things that local government spends on. It, 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 some of the uh, spending is so inappropriate. So when local government, for example, uh, spends taxpayers' money to benefit private uh, private companies, I think that's so wrong. Uh, government should provide a level uh, level operating field, a level business field, to the various businesses that serve us. It should not pick uh, favorites and say we're going to give uh, benefits to this company and that company. And, no, that's tyranny. Uh, that's the opposite of freedom of choice. I mean, to, to have your own money go to your competitors. Right. Uh, your own and and, and so it, it's really good when uh, citizens develop the hobby of uh, government watching, uh, starting with their local governments. So the citizens that Should go out... Should be allowed and, to videotape, you know, in public places, no matter I what? I think so. Yeah. We want open government. So in our... De uh, in our uh, representative democracy, it's hard for the people to know what's going on if they, uh, if, if things are kept secret. Should we so, have like pr better protections for um, whistleblowers? Uh, that makes sense. Why punish whistleblowers when the whistleblowers are trying to make things better? Yeah, like a way so, where they could, you know, yeah. like so, share to an independent um, group what they know or something like that. Yeah, so so when the whistleblower is punished for revealing the scandals, uh, that the punishment of the whistleblower really protects the scandals. Uh, so in open government, we, we want the citizens to know what's going on. We want the whistleblowers to come forth and explain where this is going wrong or that's going wrong. Uh, so well, that's good. It, that, that 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 is good to know. Um, and um, so, it's, it's if if you did see stuff though that like you, you know you would be concerned about um, like one of the things like in the voluminous bill that you would check to see is if it violated any civil rights and stuff like that. I would say is that correct or uh, right? I I want uh, the citizens to be able to choose their own lifestyle 
if they want to use uh, harmful uh, substances, uh, that's their business, not a government's business. So I want the citizens to have control over their their individual lifestyle. And the uh, what will happen is uh, they'll become a good example or a bad example. And uh, with uh, with an overpopulated world that's uh, driving uh, the wilderness out of existence. Uh, we can afford to allow people to uh, choose to become bad examples if they wish to. So um, right now we're, we're uh, exterminating the wildlife of our planet. We're tur- to feed our uh, increasing number of people, we're turning more and more wilderness into farmland. Uh, well, we're, we're cutting down the good... rainforest, that's for sure, and we're you yeah. know, discovering lots of new species there all the time. Wouldn't, like, a lot of deforestation be reduced if we legalized industrial hemp? Uh, well, I think it's a good idea to uh, legalize industrial hemp, and I think it's a good idea to legalize harmful substances and leave it up to the individual well, whether they're going... But that's kind of a you know, um, a, a term to call it harmful in the first place. Um, it might be. It doesn't mean it. Well, hemp, hemp may not be harmful. Uh, hemp may be very uh, 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 extremely good product. Uh, uh, it seems but, like uh, it, 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 if, you know, t- like if you designed like a, a perfect industrial plant to, to grow easy, um and to make a lot of it strong material, and that has lots of different uses, I mean, it could have been um, like a genetically modified plant. <laughs> yeah. That was produced uh, to like uh, support a, a society. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, to raise the living standard, we have to allow our people to be free. We have to allow our people uh, to, uh, to, uh, express themselves and uh, if they're not harming other people uh, they should be left alone uh, that sounds uh, like uh, the, the way of the future I mean that sounds like um, you know something more civilized rather than less civilized I would say I mean that sounds like a nice um, vision um, of people being free and uh, able to um, you know uh, network and, and stuff like that um, uh, it now, do you think? Um, do you think like so? The people in the District Seven, and other people in Washington as well. Um, I mean, even around the country, because you would be going to the U.S. House, and so we all might have a partial interest. I know the special interests have an interest, so I think, you know, we should have an interest even more so. And um, uh, so what? I think you, you know. Now you would um, you would uh, swear to protect uh, the Constitution as uh, keep your oath to do that in your decision making. The, the Constitution is a wonderful document. Uh, it's uh, just amazing how the uh, the writers of the Constitution uh, promoted our rising living standard by writing that document. So uh, that document uh, led to uh, the greatness of the United States. And uh, to uh, maintain our greatness and to to spread our greatness to the rest of the world, uh, we have to defend the uh, Constitution of the United States. And we, we should recommend it to the other nations. And we should recommend it uh, through our embassies and through the, our, our rising living standard. So uh, the way we prove that we're on the right track is to uh, make sure that we unsabotage our economy, like abolish things like the minimum wage that uh, that throws so many uh, well, do you think people out, out of work. Be able to do that. Um, now you know what? That's another thing, though. Here's yeah, the fed, yeah, the federal government should not do that. It's better to leave that to the states. So the states could still set a minimum wage. Yes, and then this, we can compare the living standard in the states that go uh, set right. prices by supply and demand right. with the states that have a minimum wage. And I would think that the states that uh, see, I think there is a valid, by supply and demand yeah. would uh, 
uh, prove I hear in the long I run to have the higher living standard. I think there definitely is a value of the 50 laboratories of freedom um, approach mm -hmm, to this. Right. Um, now, I do think it needs to be emphasized uh, because of history that um, that doesn't mean any state can violate, um, you know, the Constitution. But beyond right. beyond that, um, then uh, you know you can have 50 laboratories of freedom. But um, uh, so there yeah. is one. Oh, so we lines, we, we is, need uh, to uh, keep uh, keep the uh, federal government within its bounds, within its chains, so that the state uh, life in the states uh, can flourish. So that the uh, people who go, uh, the citizens of each state can uh, seek what they think is the best path. Yeah, so the Commerce then, Department helps commerce instead of hurts it. Yeah, and if we look at my favorite space program, my favorite government program, uh, the uh, waste and destruction in my favorite government program is terrible. If, whenever I look at a, another area of government, I'm sure it's the same way. So it could be that there's much harmful um, ongoings in the Commerce Department and in you know what? And, NASA and many other departments. NASA should have lottery tickets for um, like space flights and then you know one out of so many people would get a free space trip like um, well well I like the idea of uh, NASA promoting private enterprise in in our space program so uh, NASA should take a uh, support role to uh, private enterprise right. so the uh, uh, the uh, uh, actual going into space should be done by pri private uh, enterprise with the support of NASA so uh, so we should sell a lot of the uh, assets of NASA to the private sector and then have the uh, private sector do the well, actual how work. About this? Like, should we sell it to the private sector, or should we just give it to the private sector and let everyone have equal access to like whatever we discover? We we should funds? not give a, give give away the taxpayers' assets. Well, no, no, but the, the, but the, the government this, assets think... belong to the taxpayers, right? And uh, that's why we should sell it and not give it away. Well, so when you give it away, you're favoring certain companies right, so when you at sell the expense it, of other companies. W w when you sell it, um, how long do they have the right to be exclusive to that new technology? Well, we, we sell the uh, public's technology to... Uh, well, the, the, the public te uh, technology belongs to the public. It was paid for by the... Yeah, by the people. Well, I mean, so if it's people. just public funding, like, would it, but it would hugely, um, like, help a lot of markets, like, just say, hey, this is open source here. We discovered this with your tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Any business, any entrepreneur, anybody, you know, have fun with this and just create stuff. And um, that would be, like, you know, like little, um, you know, just rays of, like, enlightenment just being shot out every once in a while. Yeah. But we have things that we can sell that are owned by the people through their government. So the things that the, the people own through their government, those things can be sold to pri private businesses, like uh, uh, rockets for uh, delivering uh, uh, um, payloads into, into orbit. Yeah, that, that sounds fine. I mean, but in a lot of companies, some companies might find other ways to do it too, you know? So. Yeah. And then the launch facilities, uh, for example, the government owned launch, I should say, the people owned launch uh, facilities through the government can be rented out uh, to the various launch companies. So when somebody launches for, from, uh, from a facility in California or in Florida, uh, it can go to the uh, highest, uh, the launch facilities can go to the highest bidder. Uh, so that company gets to use it, uh, the, the launch facilities at uh, Yeah, so there might Cape be Canepo. certain things like that are like actual like commodities or actual like machinery, like yeah. that you're renting out. That that's one thing, and then but then there's other things that's just knowledge that I think should be shared um, equally. Yeah. Um, but what do, we, what do you think, like, if we trade with a country who puts a 10% tax on us, should we make it exactly equal, or should we just keep a, no um, taxes on, on their um, exports to us? Well, what you tax, you discourage. So if you want to uh, discourage employment, then it's 
good thing to increase uh, taxes on businesses if you want to uh, uh, decrease employment and plunge us into a deep recession. Now, if you want to increase employment, then you want to decrease uh, taxes on business. No, that makes sense. That, that makes yeah. sense. Um, now, um, so, no, so no, if, no, that, if business that, becomes yeah. more profitable, then business can uh, employ more people. Do you think we should have a fair tax? You know, you know the, the, the one that's, it, it means no income tax whatsoever, no payroll taxes. It's just one, not like a 999, it's just one um, sales tax. And, and there are vouchers in that plan for people who make under a certain amounts. And it probably would, I think, level itself out, you know, within like six months to a year. But what do I know? Like, what do you think about that? Well, I, uh, currently I want to lower the tax burden. Uh, so there's different proposals on how to uh, lower the tax burden, and, uh, and, and, and I, I, I tend to I'll that. probably yeah. I'll vote vote with those that uh, those proposals that lower the tax burden. That's what I plan to vote for. Good, good. I, I mean, now this would seem. Um, I mean, one thing to keep in mind about that it should only be proposed if we would get rid of the. Um, you, you know the income tax um, completely in, in, instead, um, and uh, that um, you know you could have safeguards. Like if you ever did increase it, it would have a sunset, and it had to be approved by like three fourths instead of two thirds. Um, stuff like that. The, the, the sunset legislation makes sense. So, the, so that's one well, way every to make that be sunset. That's not like an amendment to the Constitution. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much. I mean, do you think? I think. I mean. What do you think about the sunset laws? Well, I, I like the sunset laws. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, uh, so the idea is, how can we make government smaller? I mean, who could argue against sun, that? Sun, sunset, yeah. sunset laws are one method. What, what, what do you think would be the argument to not have that? Like, I'm just too lazy and apathetic. That well, I well yeah, look many up people. Well, well, most of our citizens have been educated in public schools. And so from a childhood, they've been taught that government is good, government is wonderful, government will take care of all your needs. So that's what happens when the majority of people are educated in the, by the government. Uh, so, um, so as adults, uh, many uh, citizens believe that government is the solution to all our problems. They were taught that as children, they were brainwashed. Uh, so you're, you you decided like um, you're not you, you, you know you saw the you, the Republican and the Democrat that was running um, in District Seven and um, and you decided you know I I, I can't choose either of those. Uh, district Seven uh, in the past has been uh, largely a Democratic district, so a Republican who would uh, run in the uh, District 7 would uh, automatically lose. O only a Democrat would, uh, would win in District 7. So, uh, I mean, you sound pretty strong on the environment. Uh, I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, you say, I mean, if, if it's something right, because, where, like, they because can cause we're, more damage. Uh, we're, we're told that we should be stewards of the environment, uh, not destroyers of the environment. And, and you so, like NASA? I mean, some. I mean, parts of it, you know. And uh, and yeah, yeah. Um, I, I dislike the destruction that right. NASA has com committed. Yeah, so as like, most yeah. most of the elected officials are not knowledgeable on space colonization, they have most uh, most elected officials have not studied space colonization, so they don't know what they're doing wrong. Since, uh, it's since just I, have, I mean, whoever would think that, you know, we shouldn't be going there. I, I mean, there could be solar flares. I mean, there's so much to learn, and and there could be, like, some big meteorite. I think people laugh at that, but that is, um, I don't know, kind of, you know, uh, it would be good to know if there was one heading this way, I think, at least have a forewarning of it. Well, that, 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 that's how the Earth was formed. The, the Earth was formed by bombardment from from the uh, space cloud out of which our solar system coalesced, gravi gravitationally coalesced. So uh, it's normal to be bombarded from space. Currently, we're hit by thousands and thousands and thousands of objects every day, but they they tend to be be small objects, and some are big enough that we can see as shooting stars. 
Uh, so most of the uh, big objects have already hit the Earth and formed the present size of the Earth. Uh, but uh, we recently uh, uh, filmed uh, killer uh, comets hitting Jupiter. Right. Now, Jupiter could take the impact because Jupiter is largely ga yeah. gaseous. Yeah, yeah. So when this killer comet, uh, this string of killer, killer comets crashed into uh, Jupiter, leaving Earth Earth uh, size uh, blotches on the top atmosphere. Had those comets hit the Earth, our civilization would it would not have hurt the Earth, but it would have wiped out our civilization. Except maybe the people who have bunkers and stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, there may might have been a few survivors. So 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 the threat is real. Uh, and eventually a killer uh, asteroid or comet will hit the Earth, will, will, will target the Earth again. But under my proposal of uh, orbital space colonization, uh, which, we, which we should have already started. You know, it might be, uh, like, um, tough, like, we, that, that's what we should, like, if there's anything, I mean, um, we should be, you know, that's where the future is right there i mean whoever gets there first yeah, so we, we we should be ready to mine away the uh killer asteroid or killer comet that yeah. approaches earth so that we can transform we can form its it. valuable yeah. resources into uh the space colonies the orbital space colonies so uh, instead of colonizing the surface of mars i'm advocating colonizing with orbital space colonies around the, the two moons of Mars, yeah. around Mars, and around the sun in Mars orbit and Earth orbit. Well, I think one of the moons, yeah, um, looks like a space station, um, Phobos, and um, so... Yeah, that's the one that's closest to, to uh, Mars. That's about 5,000 miles above the surface of Mars, and uh, Deimos, the other one, is about uh, 15,000 miles above the surface of Mars. Yeah, if you're going to have a space station, I mean, that would be um, a logical place. I mean, you know, I... I both, both those asteroidal-type moons would provide resources to the station. So um, so the, uh, the space colony that puts itself in orbit there could use material from those uh, two tiny asteroidal moons uh, to... Uh, to get gain material for building the space station in in the uh, the space colony. In, now, now, if in people were ever Mars. born on the, the on Mars, they would still be considered American citizens, right? If their parents were, they would be able to vote, right? Uh, we don't know what the uh, citizens of the future what laws they'll make. And, uh, I was so just kidding. We, I was just kidding. But I could imagine a future where, like, you know, that is like the new, new world, and, and then they revolt because planet Earth keeps taxing them too much and stuff like that. But uh, um, that's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, the major uh, colonies will not be on the surface of Mars. They'll be in orbit around Mars and around the Sun, and around the Moon, and. Uh, I just heard a click. What, no, did that, that was, mean anything? You know, no, no, no. That, that was just the um, my phone line here. Um, oh, okay. If um, now let me ask you this: Do, do you have any um, favorites, uh, past presidents or politicians? Um, it could be from any time, it, it, or you know, you know that uh, historically, that's you well. Historically, I like our scientists, uh, our scientists uh, who opened up uh, our technology. Uh, to mass production and the, and the people. Uh, like so the break. Einstein. And right, all, all, all of them. Uh, so one scientist makes, uh, well, well, the scientists are generally specialized and they made breakthroughs in their areas of specialty, whether it was astronomy or, or engineering or, or, uh, or chemistry or biology. Yeah. So all, all of them have helped. It's kind of like building yeah. off past knowledge too, um, mostly. Yeah, and, and we have people who will do that today, uh, who will make breakthroughs in their fields of specialties. And so, uh, uh, so it's production of goods and services that raise our living standard. So by getting more of our people back, back to work producing what is desired by the consumer, we raise our living standard. And the technology 
uh, increased during the 20th century has just been amazing. So, so we invented uh, uh, motion pictures, and we invented television, and we uh, we entered the computer age. Yeah. And uh, oh, we it, and the technology now, now, like exponentially grew this last century. Right. I mean, do you think it's because of freedom? And, I think freedom is quite important yes. in the advancement that we have made. I mean, that's a and good it, argument to make. It might be because um, freedom. I mean, it, that could be like a big reason why um, we're in the uh, a, a totally different society almost technologically than a um, hundred years ago. Yeah. So people free to pursue their interests and their desires make for a better society. And even if a person is just doing a simple job that the consumers want. For a say example, the consumers want a clean uh, community. So the people who are doing the janitorial work for the community uh, are, are helping raise our living standard. Uh, so, so everyone is, is needed uh, and the planners put people at work where they're not so uh, much needed as the private sector. The private sector, uh, the competing companies, uh, put people to work where they'll be most profitable. And uh, the Soviet Union collapsed because they didn't have the profit indicator to tell them where to put their resources. So the Soviet Union was always putting their resources where they were less needed, and consequently the Soviet Union developed as a well, you could country say they, of frustration. And this goes to the freedom aspect. They demoralized their country. I mean, I saw this one. Um, uh, I saw this one um, documentary on on this. Um, I guess uh, he, well, this ru Russian citizen, and uh, he lived during the uh, Soviet era, era, and um, well, it also was an error, and um, and he was I he worked at a, a place, and and at night he would try to make his own submarine, and um, <laughs> and uh, and he you know uh, presented it to the authorities at first because he wanted to be a submariner and, and then they discovered it later on and um i but the, you know th they <laughs> well he was trying to escape that was one thing and and he didn't but um they they've eventually rec kind of recognized him a little bit but as an inventor and um i mean that's what they're doing to their inventors and stuff like that they they they, they made them so that they've you know tried to make a submarine so they could escape mm -hmm. So some of the escape methods uh, from this social socialistic country were quite ingenious. Uh, but um, so the, the Soviet Union, the, the socialistic Soviet Union, was first in space uh, because we Americans held back. We we should have been the, the first in space, but uh, there were many Americans who were opposed to us being first in uh, space. And then the backward Soviet Union woke us up. And under President John Kennedy and his Vice President Lyndon Johnson, uh, we went to the moon. Right. And, uh, yeah, I so, think that so, was a good good choice. To... Yeah, and we should not have discontinued the Saturn V rocket. We should not have gone to the space shuttle because the space shuttle was a very wasteful project. Uh, so under the space shuttle, uh, we spent all this taxpayer money to put the space shuttle up in orbit. And we succeeded in getting it up in orbit. And it also had a uh, huge fuel tank that could have been a uh, 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 tremendous living space for the space colonists. So once we get the space shuttle up in orbit, then we bring it right back down again. And that was a uh, tremendous waste. So there were over 130 space launches of the space shuttles, which means we should now have over 260 habitats in orbit. You know, since you so, like science, what do you think, do you know about thorium? Uh, uh, tell me what you're thinking. Uh, it's, um, it, it probably would be a better way to uh, have nuclear rea nuclear power. It's a lot safer than, um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, I guess a element or a mineral or something called th thorium. 
T H O R I U. Yeah, I'll, I'll read that to the specialist in nuclear energy. Yeah. So, so, so the the people who specialize in nuclear energy, they know far more than I do uh, about uh, what is safe and what isn't, and uh, I would have to defer to their advice. Yeah, I. So, but, oh, but, okay. but 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 the specialist in nuclear energy will. Uh, eventually allow our space colonists to go out into the frozen forbidden zone of our solar system. Uh, much of our solar system is currently forbidden to us because it's just too cold. Uh, and uh, when you get uh, further and further away from the uh, sun, the sun begins to look like just a star. Yeah. So like, like if you're looking back at the uh, sun from the orbit of Uranus or, uh, or Neptune, it just looks like a bright star, and so uh, there's not much heat from the sun out in the outer solar system. But once the uh, uh, is, is there a limit to how cold it is? Uh, I mean, is there a um, like a maximum? Absolute zero. Yeah, absolute zero. Yeah, it'll go down to absolute zero. But uh, so out in the frozen, forbidden zone of our solar system, uh, that can be opened up to us by our nuclear uh, scientists and, and technologists. So that they'll find ways that the space right. colonists can, can go out to that part of the solar system. And they're studying but, different kinds of propulsion, like um, I, I forgot what the, the, the next type of propulsion will be, but I think it was... Yeah, you know, well, we, we should use the, uh, the type of propulsion that is most profitable with the current technology. So always try to uh, find the least cost method of uh, achieving your goal. Yeah. And uh, as uh, the scientists and uh, technologists come up with uh, cheaper methods of doing it, then we switch to the cheaper method. So the idea is to maximize long-run profit. So profit tells us what we're doing wrong. Uh, profit tells us what we're doing right, and loss tells us what we're doing wrong. And we should uh, uh, have some We should run away from loss. Yeah, and 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 you know. Um, have a little bit quicker um, thinking too. Um, I, I mean, not to, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be deliberate sometimes, but um, uh, but yeah, absolutely. Um, so, well, uh, I I think um, you're much better than any Republican or Democrat, that's for sure. And I think uh, well, thank you. it would be a uh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, kind of a breath of fresh air to have someone with independent views, someone who has their principles. Um, you might agree or not agree on everything, but um, I think it's... Oh, well, there's an important thing I wanted to mention sure, also. Sure, absolutely. Uh, uh, it, when I filed, I, I filed as a candidate of the Employment Wealth Party. Right. Because uh, we need incentive. Uh, we need incentive to employ people. And that incentive comes from profit and wealth. So by uh, building wealth, we build employment that is desired, employment that produces a greater production. Uh, so we, we want to raise our living standard, that means we want to increase the production of goods and services. And to do that, we have to have incentive. And the incentive of profit and taking care of wealth is why people get hired in the private sector. And so we need to produce the idea that we want to build a wealthy society of wealthy people. A, a, a society of wealthy people is a beautiful society. And so I want to raise the entire living standard of our society. And this idea of uh, attacking, attacking the wealthy and uh, uh, taking more of the wealth away from the wealthy is counterproductive and increases unemployment. And so, so I wanted to uh, build the idea that the wealthy and the, uh, jobs go together. So wealth produces wealth and profit produces jobs and a tax on wealth and a tax on profit produces unemployment. So, so we need a partnership of uh, employment and wealth so that we can uh, become, so we gain, gain a higher growth rate. Right now, our growth rate in the United States is nation, uh, and there's so much resources we're not using, so many people we're not using, 
and uh, for example, the number of homeless people are sort of indicated over how poorly we're doing. Uh, the number number of homeless people sort of indicate how badly we're operating our economy. And uh, so I want to recommend that uh, citizens who have time that they take on as their hobby the study of economics and like me become an amateur economist so so we we can understand as citizens who vote and participate in our democracy uh, what we should vote for and what we should vote against so yeah i just wanted to mention that oh that's um very thoughtful and um all right, it's, uh, it made me think of a couple different things. Um, I, I guess that that's um, what what you would have as a, a free society, and um, from what right. I've heard is it's it's basically I think that's the bottom line: a free society and um, and having some principles, um, not um, like favoring big businesses, but at the same time not hurting them. Um, and going after, or not just wasting your time on... on well, well, well uh, favoring businesses equally, um, yeah. uh, making, making things... Uh, so we, the people of America, should uh, uh, support the concept of a level playing field between all businesses, big businesses and small businesses. And actually, uh, the small businesses are an extremely important part of our, our economy. Uh, but uh, like w w wages are the payment to uh, to the employee. Profits are the payment to the owners. If the owners are incurring losses instead of profits, then the owners are being punished for providing services, uh, their services to their consumers. If, if the uh, owners are just breaking even, then the owners are working for free. Uh, to promote a healthy economy, we the people have to support the idea of the owners making profit. And uh, the profit is what uh, will increase employment doing productive things for our society. So. And, and not being dependent on government also means not being dependent on on anybody. I mean, what do you think? Do, do you think property taxes should be um, illegal? I mean, or unconstitutional? Well, uh, I like uh, I prefer property taxes to the income tax. The property tax is rather easy to calculate. The income tax is horrendous to calculate. The uh, the volumes of uh, of, of, of regulations or instructions in the income tax, a person just can't, can't encompass that in their mind. So when a person does their own income tax, well, I'm not saying the they don't know if they've done it right or wrong. It's, yeah. it's so complicated. What, well, I mean, the property tax also, though, people could, you, you know, I mean, people have lost their properties because of it too um and right and, and, and that's that that's make... why we should favor small taxes rather than large taxes yeah. so when, when you tax a thing excessively you kill it so uh, when you put heavy heavy property taxes on property uh then you encourage people to live in small dwellings and in a wealthy society i want to inc encourage people to live in uh, large dwellings, uh, comfortable dwellings. Uh, so part of our living standard uh, uh, is determined by the dwelling we live in. And so it's good to keep property taxes low, but property taxes are so much easier to calculate than income tax. Income tax is just horrendous. Well, a fair tax might be even easier, or um, but the property tax also, um, it, it's... It's kind of nice to know that, um, you know, your land's yours or, or, or whatever. I mean, it could be someone that um, just forgets to pay it one year or that, um, you, you know, was sick or something yeah. like that. And so you, if you raise the property taxes, you can actually confiscate the people, uh, people's property. Yeah, so, maybe have uh, a tax, but maybe have it where they, you know, can't take away the property, I guess. But then, then most people would probably still pay it, but um, but I guess there would be a few that wouldn't. Yeah, but there are ways, like, for example, uh, some people live with roommates or housemates, 
and it's uh, people who live with housemates. It's so much easier for them to pay their property tax than people who live alone. But anyways, that's not really a. I mean, I'm just saying it's not so much of a federal issue. I mean, it's something that um, you could. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the fe- federal, fe- federal government is overreaching. The federal government is attempting to do so much more than what it's supposed to do. So the federal government is uh, taking up the roles that should be left to the states and local government. So uh, under a government, a good government uh, led by the people, the people will promote the uh, rights of the local government and the state government and diminish the rights of the federal government. Well, yeah, and people could pass an amendment saying that, you know, certain kinds of things are banned, like a property tax or like certain, like an income tax, um, stuff like that. Um, well, oh, who they vote for is really important. Yeah, if, if they vote for the big spenders, they're going to get the overreaching, intrusive federal government. So they, they instead of voting for the big spenders, they should vote for the small spenders who understand economics. But they don't. They, they vote for the big spenders who don't understand economics. And that's why, that's, so the foundation of our uh, stagnation is that the people have not been educated in the science of economics, and they have not been voting for the small spenders, they've been voting for the big spenders, and they've been voting for the big spenders who don't understand economics. And so it's important to start teaching economics in, uh, in our public schools so that uh, when people graduate with their high school diploma, they'll have a good understanding of economics. Yeah. And currently that's not the case. So it's no wonder that our, our economy is, uh, uh, has become stagnant. That would be a good idea um, for you know people growing up to learn about that at an early age. Um, right, absolutely. right. And, and so uh, since the public schools uh, teach uh, people to love government and turn to government to solve all problems, it's a good idea to support the voucher systems so that the private schools can take over this load from the public schools. So if we were to uh, change our education system to a voucher system that promotes the growth of private schools, it might actually promote uh, the growth of America so that uh, our growth rate becomes more than 2% or 3% a year. Well, if you look at how much we spend per kid, I think uh, some people make the argument that it's about the same amount as you could give for a voucher anyways, right? Um, so it, it's that, that's a tough one. I mean, I almost think that, you know, maybe, I, I, I don't know. I mean, if people want to collectively do uh, that, but that's paid through property taxes. I mean, I don't think it necessarily should be usually because that's not um too public then but uh, it, it's it's hard to say it's uh that's um yeah people but our, 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 our is a good idea also i mean education you know people could get together and um form classes and, and you know decide to teach chemistry or biology and, and then people could uh uh you know someone could you could have like a building. That's sort of homeschooling. Yeah, well, you could have a building where people could, um, like, it, like uh, they could rent rent it out for a little bit, or they could rent it out plus they would pay like ten percent of the people paying them, and then people could uh, gather there and take that course uh, from somebody who wants to teach it. Um, they wouldn't have to have any licenses or degrees necessarily and um so you could have a building and, and rent it out um and uh, it could be like a, a a big building where there's lots of rooms and all sorts of people could um decide to be teachers and uh, yeah. they would and, 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 and these are questions that it'd be good for more citizens to think about uh to, to, to think more about this they would have to decrease their time engaged in sports to increase their time uh, thinking about government. So sports has diverted a lot of uh, talented people away from uh, watching government and uh, considering these different questions that affect their living standard. Oh, have you ever heard on a sports radio channel like the passion people have, like because the quarterback didn't throw this correctly or whatever? I mean, 
it, it would be great. So that's entertainment. Yeah, it would be great to hear uh, that entertainment. same. Entertainment. Imagine that same passion, though. Like, you know, you hear them calling into their Congress people because they didn't pass this or that bill instead of, you know, a football. Um, I mean, that's hopefully someday because what affects them more? I mean, <laughs> how is the foot? How can a football affect you more than? Um, yeah, it's just pure entertainment. Yeah, and the other is yeah. has to do with life and death and your standard of living and everything. Right. I mean, which is more important? Yeah. So, so the living standard of you and your family is more important. And to do uh, to uh, to raise your living standard, you have to develop your your specialties that you you uh, sell to our exchange economy. Uh, your labor specialty that you sell to our exchange economy. Well, what about then, now? now as an, uh, I'm sorry, as an independence, pretty much, um, sir. Um, what what do you think? Um, you know, reforms that we could do for election laws. Well, uh, here in the state of Washington, we get out a uh, voters pamphlet, but the uh, voters pamphlet is not sent out for the statewide election in the primary. So one imp great improvement would be to send the voters pamphlet out in the primary election so that the uh, citizens uh, who are voting hear the interesting ideas from the many, many candidates uh, rather than the t uh, tired old uh, line uh, and, same and, old, same and, old arguments in the general election. And who pays for those voter pamphlets, by the way? It's the taxpayer that pays for the voters' pamphlets. Yeah. So, could can you say like you're not making a a fully informed decision if you don't know all your options? Right. So here in the state of Washington, the voters are not informed in the primary, which is the important election. So it's in the primary that the. Uh, uh, wild and crazy ideas come out, some of which lead to actual improvements. So, so you when you, to, you, um, you it, it, what is it, in Washington, the top two people go go in? So right, you have to irrespective of which party. So right. two Republicans, in a Republican district, there can be two Republicans facing off uh, against each other in the general election. And, uh, and you have an in a Democratic district, uh, right. district uh, the two top Democrats might face off against each other. So in the, uh, it is open election. primary, though, right? So it doesn't matter. It's an open primary. Yeah. Top, okay. top two vote getters go on to the general election. Well, when is that um, vote, uh, that election date um, for that? The, the primary is, uh, I think, uh, Tuesday, August 7th. All right. And, and then the general is, uh, I forget, uh, well, it's, it's in early, in, uh, early Tuesday in November. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I mean, hopefully, um, you, you, you know, you know, you just declared your candidacy not too long ago, but I mean, you know, you should be do some press releases, some radio interviews um, from um, conservative and liberal programs, um, and and independent, um, objective ones as well, and uh, you, you know, you should be do press releases too from um, you know your local media and, and then organizations you know, meetups, um, different organizations that have gatherings um, that would be interested in having someone speak and take questions and answers um, and things like that. And, and then you could have, um, uh, you know, town halls and, and stuff like that. And um, so if people want to support your campaign, sir, and uh, what, 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 what would you think would be the best ways that... Um, people could support your I mean it's not just your campaign it's um it, either you're fine with the way things are for the last 10 the last 20 the last 30 40 years or um, you could be like 60% uh, of the people that don't even show up and vote but that doesn't help anything even if there was a 10% turnout that the, the the Republicans and Democrats wouldn't have any shame about it. I mean, I, I'm sad to say that, but I believe that to be the case. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to sounds see, right. Yeah, they they wouldn't care if it was one percent. Um, George Bush didn't care that he lost a popular vote as much, and and, and no one they, they they don't care. So that's not going to make any difference. That's going to make a difference for the worse. Um, how about um, elect you know someone that's sincere and someone that will uphold the Constitution. And um, that's better 
than the Republican and the Democrats. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, this is, um, I would say you would be, um, like, I might not agree on every issue, but I think you would be a, um, a plus. Um, I think a Democrat or Republican wouldn't even be neutral. I think um, if yeah. they're typical ones, they would probably, you know, unfortunately, if, if it's the way we've had, we've already had a full house of Democrats in um, uh, after 2008. We already had a full house of Republicans after, I think, uh, 2002. So it's, it, it, we've, we've tried it, and we've tried it w- with both of them having a full house. We need to, I, I, can you imagine maybe this year, like 10 to 20 um, independents being elected into the House, and then maybe the year after, ten, two years after, 20 more, and, and possibly even more? I, I'm not good at predicting uh, who, who will win. In the past, the, uh, uh, I think right now we only have one or two or three independents in, in Congress. So generally the voters have elected either Republican or Democrat. Uh, who's going to win? Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't really predict uh, you know, All they're going to mostly do to win. is take away more civil liberties, give more money right. to the special interests. The same old big government that stagnates our economy. Yeah, the same old stag- stagnates. Yeah, so, so normally that's who the voters vote for. The voters vote to maintain the stagnation. If people want a, attention to get these people's attentions, I mean, this is what the Democrats and Republicans will say after, like, they lose the House. They'll Instead of saying, like, we have to listen to the people... They always seem to like say the line that goes something like, um, "We just didn't get our message out enough. We just have to like form better ways to express what we're trying to say." Uh, the people just might not understand what we're saying. No, I think the people understand what you're saying, and 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 they, and they're like, "Oh, you know, sometimes the, the Republicans win, sometimes the Democrats win." It's because we're just sick of both of them but we do have other choices there's another choice i mean sometimes you have to and usually that choice is only in the primary and uh in the primary it's mainly the republicans and democrats who vote many uh independents don't even bother to vote in the primary now this year people can and and republicans and democrats um registered ones they can vote for you right uh, yes, any, anyone can vote for me who lives in the uh, 7th District. You can win. So they, I mean, if there's they, just they, enough yeah, people they, that are dissatisfied with the Democrats and the Republicans and want to choose somebody that is um, sincere and uh, takes these issues seriously, a lot more serious than um, the, the people that are wasting all our money and, and violating our rights and don't even... Um, you know, research the topics that they're, you know, voting on a lot of the times, um, they're, they're, they're not representing us. I mean, we hire them yeah. to, to be our representative. And, uh, like if you, if, if, if you were like an actor and you had an agent, I mean, you would have fired this agent a long time ago. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, many citizens don't pay attention. And so many citizens don't know what's going on. And uh, they just, uh, many don't vote, as you mentioned earlier, Thomas. And uh, so many don't pay attention, many don't vote. So it's just uh, our government is decided be low by, by those. I think that must be the reason. It, it's got to be low self-esteem. If you or our, know, other, uh, other interests. So uh, some people just, are interested in their church. Some people are interested in their sports. Some are interested in But if you're interested in sports, church, and entertainment, you got to understand that it, it, this will affect it. I mean, look how the government is affected with censorship, the music and, 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 and the movie industry, and, and how the music and the m- movie industry tried to affect what SOPA was. Like, there's, I mean, I understand you can have protections of copyrights, but you can't prosecute somebody until they've been proven guilty. And, and that's right. the problem with that bill was they could just say that person violated it without any investigation, shut you down before you had any due process. That's the big problem with it. It wasn't had to do anything like I wasn't opposed to the copyright thing per se. It was the fact that there was no due process in the thing. Um, and uh, so it, it's it, and, and th- it was close to passing. Luckily enough, people called in and prevented it from being passed. So I guess there are there there not everyone in Congress is bad, but we definitely need um, 
we need a wave. We, this will get media attention. I mean, nothing, you, you know, the media isn't going to cover it for too long that there was a low turnout again this year. They'll, but they will cover if, like, there was um, an accidental, unusual, uh, they'll call it an anomaly, um, amount of independents and third party people. I mean, this is, you know, what the Tea Party, what the Occupy Wall Street, where this is, this has to be. The, the fruits of their labor. I mean, if this is what they want, um, they have a choice. They can, and, and anyone else who's an independent or who doesn't, you know, always vote their party, um, you do have a choice. And uh, and I, I don't, to, to vote a, a Republican or Democrat, if, if they're just like a mainline typical one, um, I, I, I don't see how they could do it or find it in their best interests. But, um, well, b on closing here, um, what what is, a, I, I'm looking at your um, uh, your web space, uh, uh, I mean, your web um, site blog. here. Yes, uh, Colonize Space, your blog spot on the blog, colonizespace.blogspot.com. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I have two blogs. One, one is uh, 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 colonize space uh, uh, dot blogspot dot com, and the other is uh, colonize orbital space uh, dot blogspot dot com, and um, I'm I'm going. I haven't uh, on the second one. I haven't posted in several years, but I'm going to be doing a big post in in the next few weeks on the second site that's going to explain my space program well you okay, uh, and I, I think I think uh, Thomas you would probably agree with uh, many of my positions if uh, if we had time to sit down and, and uh, talk them over uh, in in person but you're in Florida and I'm in Washington state so uh, so that's not possible well, I can tell. Yeah, I mean, I I, I would yeah. enjoy doing that. Um, yeah. And I, I can tell that. Um, I mean, you're so much more. I mean, you, you know, good space guy. You're pretty down to earth, huh? <laughs> uh, I, I like to refer to our Earth as spaceship Earth. So we're, we we live on a beautiful spaceship built by nature, and uh, it's just a paradise planet Absolutely. compared to the other 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 world. That's a good way of thinking it. I mean, I mean, life is short compared to um y you know this infinite universe and uh and you know it should be fun and um and, and that is a way sometimes we lose perspective of how what where we're at i mean how how should we be spending our time i mean i've thought about the earth as spaceship earth too before and uh mm -hmm. yeah it, it's um it, it, it's, it could be an, an exciting, adventurous time, and, uh, and that's the way it should be. And, um, it, and space is one of those things that can get conversations going up. I, I know a lot of people have interest in it. Um, it's uh, just people really need to question themselves of, like, um, what is holding them back? I mean... Um, Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge is holding them back. Lack of knowledge is uh, stagnating them. Uh, so m most of my ideas come from uh, my studies in economics and business and and astronomy. And so uh, on each issue, for example, if there were an issue that uh, that you did not agree with me in, if you and I went back over that issue at the source material that I got out of the textbooks of business or the textbooks of economics. Well, I think I agree with a lot of what you say, and I, and I know yeah. on, on some certain issues, but I, I get the, like I when you said how you took, um, you know, how you felt about the Constitution. Um, so that to me, that's the main thing. To me, it's all about civil liberties. I think we're on the same mm -hmm. page there. I think it's mm -hmm. just maybe the taxes. I And, and, and you, you know what? I, 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 I'm not someone that has to agree with somebody on every single thing. I mean, to me, it's like <laughs> the, the Republicans and Democrats are so bad, like um, that uh, they passed the NDAA, which allows, um, which which intended to allow um, until the courts strike it down. Um, I mean, they struck down part of it, but not not fully all of it because the Congress just tried to reintroduce that one section back again. And um, now, um, so I'll have to go to court again. But um, but we. 
can have indefinite detention. Um, I, I mean, and uh, without habeas corpus, knowing what you're being mm -hmm. charged. I yeah, mean, that's terrible. And the terrible. Fourth Amendment, uh, legal searches and seizures, and and I consider property tax kind of like that. But but you know what? I, I, I would still vote for you anyways because I know that's a local issue anyways. It's not a practical decision that I wouldn't vote for you on, on that. And, 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 also, and we need to have like, a balance, you're ten times a balance between local, local government and state states. government and federal yes. government. Yeah, and, and you're without a doubt, like, way better. You're way better than, you know, endless w wars that aren't declared, are like uh, trillions of dollars going overseas for destructive uses, as you say, mm -hmm. to, you, you know, bombing bridges so we can borrow more money to, to, to rebuild them. And um, so, yeah, I'm totally with you. So, so if we stop the destruction, we automatically raise our living standard. Yeah, we certainly would. Absolutely, we would. I mean, that's real money, and um, and so that's uh, real time and, and, and effort of, of ours. Um, absolutely, no. I, I'm I'm with you. Like probably on like you know 90 percent of the issues. I believe that's and pretty good. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so so and 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 and. Um, I mean, the main thing is that uh, you're not going to play the usual politics. You are going to stick up for principle, and uh, and uh, yes, when I when, when I tell people, and, and you, you know where you stand, you know your convictions. I mean, these a lot of these yeah. politicians, they don't, they um, they have no spine. They're they're lap dogs. Yeah. They're based. They're really yeah. lap dogs. They're lap. Dogs. Well, when I, when, when yeah. I tell people that the minimum wage destroys jobs and destroys companies. That's a very unpopular statement, but it's true. So uh, we have to abolish the minimum wage so that more people can get, get work well, and more we, companies so, can stay in business. Some things might be true, like, and, and some things might need to be done in the right order, because I, I, I do... Right order is impor important. Yeah, definitely the right order is important. Like, I mean, there... Um, yeah, so so that's a good, good, good point, because the, the, it's... So, yeah, I, I think you wouldn't need a minimum wage if people had, like, better property rights. And I also think instead of selling off all the land, we should probably, for, like, a cheap price, let, like, you know, some... Of the market price. Well, market let the price. marketplace, let people, like, own land and, and never have to worry about ever having it taken away unless if they, you know, violate any someone else's rights. And uh, that's what we... Because that's one of the biggest expenses... For people, it's, it's housing, food, and energy. And if mm -hmm. there's ways we can reduce those three things, then perhaps in the future, you know, a realistic 20-hour work week might be um, realistic, and people can pursue their time into studying the science and the arts, and 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 form different collectives to, uh, you, you know, invent different things and discover uh, things that weren't there. And then we could have more. Um, you know, and, and there might be other people that prefer to work um, for somebody else 70 hours a week, more entrepreneurship, more like Smith shops, basically, yeah. and uh, with high technology. But also, um, it, it's uh, we might have automation do a lot of work, you know, maybe 100 years from mm -hmm. now or something, too. So yeah. eventually, that's going to kill a lot of jobs anyways. Yeah, people want to spend more time at jobs they find exciting and, and fun and interesting. Instead and, of just, and, and, in other words, what I'm saying, instead of just trying to find ways to pull up income, we also need to find ways to reduce expense. And, and jobs that are boring and hard and, drud and drudgerous, uh, people like to spend less, less time at work. Uh, so if we leave it up to the individual how much work they want uh, in the type of work that they're providing. Yeah, here's, here's the thing a lot of people get scared about big business, and I will back you up on this. The, the big businesses, the, the only ways they get real big and monopolistic is if they have the protection from the government. I mean, so now, but they, the the truth is they do well, have Which would be unfair. Which would be unfair. So, I, I mean, a lot of these arguments are if certain things were in place before you could mm -hmm. get rid of, like, minimum wage and stuff, you have to make sure all those other well, things are... Well, no, no, normally we, uh, we set prices by supply and demand. Uh, so it, we're working for each other. We, we, we all are consumers and we all are workers and so in our exchange economy we're working for each other and uh, to tell uh, uh, our exchange economy that it has to pay this minimum wage uh, to a saddle maker uh, really reduces the saddle making industry 
which is okay because the consumers have less desire for saddle, horse saddles. Yeah, uh, we're making that, people too dependent on, on, on big corporations, too. I mean, there, there is a place for them because they can collectively um, invest in other things. But people grew, a lot of people grew up, like, in the age of big corporations, like um, probably, the, you know, in the 60s and stuff. And, um, and before that, there were a lot more smaller businesses. And, and there still are a lot of small and mid-sized businesses. Yeah. But, but we depend, pe- a lot of people depend on, on corporations, not just for their income, but they also depend on it for health insurance. I mean, it's like the big corporation is like their mommy and daddy. I mean, we don't want to be dependent on government. And at the same time, I don't think we want to be dependent on big companies. We want to be depend- independent. Um, we, we, we want to have competition. So uh, we want different companies, uh, businesses, small and large, competing for our services. Right, and without them getting special deals, they right. they, they they can only they can only um, make money uh, with. And I'm saying without any special deals, if someone mm-hmm. gives them voluntarily money by buying some of their products. Um, right. That that's the thing people don't get. But a lot of these companies. They're, they would be out of business if they didn't get special deals from the government. They would be literally out of business. And uh, so that's what we have. And, and it's do. okay for companies to go out of business. Yeah. So when, when the consumers no longer like their products, uh, when the consumers uh, switch from the horse and buggy age to the automobile age, that was a proper. That was proper for the horse and buggy industries to go out of business and the automobile uh, age industries to come into existence. So when, when one industry goes out of business, that's okay because it re- releases resources to the expanding industries that are now more in demand by the consumer. So the consumer decides with their uh, purchasing dollars which companies will prosper and which companies will go down. But now when you have, a, say you have a person who's working in a declining industry that's no longer desired by the the uh, consumer, when you tell that industry it has to pay this minimum wage, then those people who want to continue well, working I, I, that I, I, industry lose, yeah. lose their job. I, mean, I can agree to that if we got rid of all the other things that, um, that first, I mean, it has to be in the right order. I, I, if, if we got rid of all the special things and, and the consumer ha- had like all the rights and, and they had property rights and they, they were guaranteed all their bill of rights and, and they, you know, weren't paying to subsidize their competition and, and everything like that with rules and regulations, well, then I would say well, I, I don't think if, if we, we don't need the minimum wage in that situation. Um, yeah, I, I think I think if we go to setting prices for for labor by supply and demand, the quicker we go to that, the quicker we raise the living standard. And, and so, also, uh, I think we also need to like just rethink our whole paradigm. I mean, in the future, like I said, it, it's, it, we, we, we might want to think of new ways of completely looking at it, like being more sustainable um, and uh, being, you, you know, better prepared um, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and having land that we can build on and, um, and also, uh, you know, be able to have a free market where we can buy um, our food and um, let the, uh, you know, inventors to design new energy things, like instead of all being on a grid, being dependent on government. I also think government could be used in a volunteeristic way as a way for, you know, people to assemble and organize so they could have a trusted system that was a fair negotiator so they could set up like a, uh, like, um, like a public option, but it couldn't be mandatory and it wouldn't come, like you wouldn't have to be forced to pay for it. But if you wanted yeah. to pay for it, you could. Um, yeah. And um, and and it would be the price would be set progressively just based on um, how much it costs to run it. But it would still, if enough people participated, it, and and um, you, you know, it would still cost probably a lot less than uh, a lot of places because um, there would be uh, no you know advertising costs, CEO pay, and, and they would be able to negotiate lower prices for certain things. Um, yeah, but, but uh, right, right now, tonight, there will be a lot of people sleeping out in the brush because they're homeless and they can't get jobs at the minimum wage. So if we abolish, abolish the minimum wage yeah. tonight, they would be able to get jobs, these homeless people, and they would be able to get an income with which to buy a tent or a car or something or 
uh, eventually uh, uh, rent housing. So for the homeless people who sleep every night out in the brush, it's important that we quickly abolish the minimum wage. So the minimum wage uh, is is not is uh, the minimum wage is a principle that is against the private enterprise sector, against the supply and demand. It's against economics. So in economics, we set prices by supply and demand, and uh, that should apply to labor also. So the quicker we abolish the um, minimum wage, the quicker our living standard can rise. Now, I, I, you know, so I, I, I'll... I, I would just still say it has to be in, the, in, in a certain order. I mean, that, that wouldn't be the, the, you know, it'd have to be once, like, conditions were um, a level playing field for everyone. But I hear what you're saying because you're making yeah. a point. So that, I, I, oh, I, I, I want to go point. back to pri- private enterprise but, but, and yeah, our you're exchange making, economy as soon as possible. Get, get your point because you're making a point that, um, you, you know, it, it, it's not about what I was saying. Like, you're making the point that um, this is urgent that we do it because it's going yeah, to Yeah, when people have to thing. sleep out of the brush, that's urgent. Yeah. So, so the elected officials go and sleep in their comfy beds every night. And the homeless people that they've created. How about created. people don't even have to report their wages at all, and, and then we just have a sales tax uh, on things, and and, and that. And way, it should be a low, low sales tax. Yeah, low sales uh, tax, and, and that way people could just hire people without any paperwork whatsoever, and, and and just do what they want as long as they don't hurt others, and then and let people open up like um, hot dog stands without needing permits, as long as they're not like you, you know you know invading other people's property and stuff and. Pol- polluting and, and stuff like that but allow people to start up small businesses without all these like uh, and, and, and they start them at home in the garage so uh, zo- zoning by uh, local government that, 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 that you, you know start their own hairdressing company or, 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 mm-hmm. or just like a lot of different companies that they could start but a lo- you, right at home yeah I, I mean and um, and so uh, and so that was a natural method in, back in Europe in, in the old times People normally operated their businesses out of their homes. Yeah, that, that, that in, 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 in the village industries. That's kind of back to the future. I, I mean, because now it's even better. A good the movie. Internet. That that was a great movie. Yeah, yeah, and and with the internet, it's kind of like the village, but even more. And and not to say there isn't, you know, any place. You know, I guess the marketplace would decide if there's a place for like big companies like Microsoft and and things like that. But um. Uh, it's very interesting, and, and, and I, I think I still would feel comfortable voting for you, though, because, I, I mean, um, even on the things that, that I would debate you about, it's, I, that's not something so I... So it require, qu- about, require, so. requires more debate. But so, so I want people who can't get jobs under the minimum wage, I want to get them jobs as quickly as possible, and that's why... But I think I you st- need to see the big picture, because like, I, 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 I like how you're um, confronting this and, and, and making it an issue, because, I mean, because that's the way you have to do it, if that's what you're going to do, but that is kind of a... could be a hot topic and, to some people. And, and I, I, I need a mandate for, for us to go back to pri- private enterprise in our exchange economy. I need a mandate. And uh, so people need to understand in advance that I intend to vote to abolish the minimum wage, that I advocate abolishing the minimum wage, because right now, today, there are people who can't get jobs, and so we're losing their production. And I want to increase production, and through the increase of production that we raise the living standard. So the more people we can get in the labor force, uh, the better. And uh, right at, at the minimum wage, Many people can't get jobs at the minimum wage, and uh, I want to change that so that everybody can get jobs and have a choice of jobs. And uh, so, say you you're having a so say we have we abolish the minimum wage, and a person who wants to do a particular type of work that's not desired gets a job at a low low wage. Well, that person at least has a job at low wage and is producing. And if they want to raise their income, then they can develop their skills and go to a job that is more desired by the consumer. So the consumer desire. Uh, but, but, the consumer, okay, so let me, you as the consumer decide. Yeah, but but yeah, th- that would work if there weren't other there weren't other mandates because now if someone 
you know, was working for less than minimum wage and it forced them to pay like a health insurance mandate to force them to pay like um, like certain taxes and stuff. And, um, and why is the federal government doing that? Yeah. I, I don't think so that's you'd have in to the... get rid of both because with because if you don't get rid of the other thing, it's almost not fair, um, even though it's preventing them from getting a job. It's it's almost like saying. You, you know, in order to live, um, you, you, you know, you're not really free. Like, you're, you're kind of owned in, in a way, you know? Yeah. Well, if the government says uh, you can't get a job because the job you do, uh, the work you do is not worth the minimum wage, when the government says you can't get a job, uh, that's a real cruel government. And, and we don't uh, have a dollar that's stable. I mean, we have a government that's willing to... We have a, a, a dollar of decreasing dollar purchasing of power. Yeah, it's willing to devalue our dollar because it's now it's going somewhere. I mean, when, when they... It punishes the savers. When, when they create this inflation, it's not like they're giving it to the people so it just all equals out. They're giving it to certain, um, they're picking winners and losers. And, and didn't they just create like a trillion, like, didn't they do it like, to, didn't they create like a trillion new dollars in the currency or something like that a couple of years ago? Uh, something like that is, it's really hard to keep track, but the incre increase in the money supply has uh, apparently been great. And uh, when you increase the money supply, you promote inflation. So the more dollars you have circulating, Right, and so and, and a, 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 a having stagnant a yeah. production of goods and services, you have more dollars with which to buy those goods and services. So the purchasing power of each dollar becomes less, and so typically the government has been following a inflationary policy, which uh, harms savings and thus harms investment. Because and our investment dollars comes from our savings dollars. And I would say that would need to be taken care of, you, you know, either before or at the same time as the minimum wage. But, it, it, but you know what, to me... Well, the, the, uh, the, the time for, to abolish the minimum wage was a long time ago. So we've lost so much production because of the minimum w wage. And it's production that determines our living standard. So the minimum wage has reduced the living standard of the American people, and has the minimum wage has helped give the uh, American people a stagnant uh, living standard, and has decreased our image in the eyes of the world. And uh, uh, so, it's extremely important that we abolish the minimum wage as soon as possible, so people can get jobs as soon as, as soon as possible. Uh, and people don't have to stay in low-paying jobs if they choose to uh, develop their abilities and talents in other jobs that are more demanded by the consumer. The consumer, you the consumer, determines what different jobs will pay by who you uh, spend your, uh, your dollars with. So the competitive free market works for you the consumer and you, you, the consumer, are the leader. And I much prefer have you, the consumer, be the leader than some government planner in Washington, D.C. So I want to decrease the power of the planners in Washington, D.C. and increase your power as consumers. So. Well, it's, uh, I, I mean, I... Now, Thomas, where in Florida do you live? Okay, I'm um, near uh, uh, Parrish, Florida. Parish oh, yeah, it's in okay. County. Um, nice, nice, nice sounding name. A little bit uh, south of Tampa. So, south Tampa, yeah. okay. I, I, I like the Tampa area. Cool. I, 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 I like the, the Clearwater area. Yeah, yeah, that's... N nice, nice vacation place. Yes, it is, sir. Um, well, and so I, 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 I think um, that still needs a little more debate, but, but I still feel convinced that um, you would be better than Republican and Democrat and, and that you would, I, I think you would do good things. Um, like I said, I think uh, as a, a net, it would be positive, and I think you are a cool person. It's cool talking with you. Um, so w there is another choice. I think what the Democrats and Republicans have been doing, um, it, it's just they, there has to be a, um, a standard set. There has to be, like, I'm not trying to... Um, uh, you, you know, be argumentative with them, but there has to be a certain kind of um, boundary that they cross, and I think they've crossed it these last 10 years. Uh, Long before that. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 they cross it repeatedly. So um, it's. Uh, well, who's who's it's the incumbent sad. in your um, who's the incumbent in uh, your district? Is or is it uh, McDermott, Congressman McDermott? Oh, Jim McDermott. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Did, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's he's been the incumbent for a long time. Okay. No, I. So uh, he's he's reigned over years and years of unemployment. So year after year after year, the un unemployment under. Uh, 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 McDermott continues, and uh, uh, it apparently is going to continue for as long as the uh, voters vote for people who uh, defend the minimum wage. Yeah, and but that's you know. So I, I would say, uh, if you want to defend the minimum wage, you would vote for Congressman McDermott. If you want to uh, abolish the minimum wage and go to back to. Uh, free enterprise and sending prices by supply and demand, then you vote for good space guy. Now, I mean, to, to me, and, and I think that's a good thing to say, I would also, so... Um... Well, it's reality. And uh, in the reality is that the voters have voted to stay, make us a, a stagnant nation. And I object to being, I object to the, for the, I object to the United States being a stagnant nation. So, so we we need to upset the the apple cart. Well, no, that's not a good idea. Don't upset the apple cart. We need to uh, we need to get a better cart. Uh, so uh, instead of selling apples, uh, let's uh, sell uh, more high high, high product uh, goods. Well, let, let's let's sell everything that the consumer wants, including apples. Yeah. So if the so let's not upset the apple cart. Let's sell apples and let's sell high high tech products and let's sell whatever we can make that the consumer consumer wants. So uh, if you well, want uh, to continue uh, uh, unemployment well, what, what for the incumbent, say, yeah, and I agree. I think a lot of the things that that you'll be able to champion will, will be worth a, a, a champion. I would say, like the, the minimum wage isn't really my major issue, but even with that, I, I, I can find other reasons also that I would support you besides just that. That's all I was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, um, so maybe someday I, I will see but, that. But, but, point. but if elected, I need that mandate that people understand that I intend to set prices by supply and demand and not by minimum prices such as the minimum wage. Well, I think, uh, and and uh, you know, so Adam Smith is that someone who that's uh, oh, he's one of my heroes. Yeah, I think he, yeah. a lot of people admire him. Um, it's funny that the left and the right. Um, he, he he published his book in 1776, a, a year easy for us to remember in America. That, that's right. Uh, that's that's right. Yeah, Adam Smith. People like I'm sure everyone's heard that. Um, you know, it would probably be a good idea to, 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 to actually read it. And, uh, yeah, definitely a great, um, you know, philosopher there. And uh, so, well, um, good space guy. It's been a pleasure. And um, now I, I, I would vote for you for a couple reasons. I mean, I could give um, reasons um, that, uh, you, you know, you're independent thinking. And that's what I would say. And you're not sold out. And those would be my two biggest reasons. Um, and uh, and it's going to send a um, a positive message to Washington D.C. and um, and the powers that be and for the people and it's going to show the possibilities of what can be um, if we you, you know step outside of the cave and, and see that there's more outside of it. Um, so um, well, any final thoughts? And if if not, then uh, you, you know that that's I'm about all the questions I have on on, on this time today, sir. Well, I, Thomas, I want to thank you for calling me and uh, do, uh, conducting this interview. And it's sort of fantastic. Here I'm sitting in my imaginary space shuttle, uh, one-person space shuttle. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm sitting in my van. I, I, I pretend that, too. I mean, you know what? Anyone who says that they don't, uh, there are a lot of people that, that sometimes, you know, can pretend that once in a while. You know. Yeah. And, and so here I'm sitting in my my van, which I refer to as my imaginary space shuttle, and I, I'm talking to you from uh, Seattle, Washington, right. to a person in Florida by way of my, my smartphone 
uh, imported from uh, South Korea. Uh, and uh, it's just amazing, the technology. Uh, and so I want to thank you for contacting me and conducting this interview. And um, so just thank you. Uh, you're very welcome, and, and, and thank you for your accessibility, um, showing like um, how you would represent people, um, being accessible, uh, not, not hiding from the electric, um, uh, sincerely wanting to do, um, y you know, to make a, a, a positive impact here, kind of in the same spirit um, of 1776, uh, referring back to that date. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, been an honor, sir, and I hope you have a, a, a good uh, 4th of July coming up and a good holiday, and um, uh, we'll keep uh, an eye on your campaign, and I, I, I would just uh, th thank, thank you for your time and, and say to everyone, um, you, you know, whether you're around the United States, um, because I'm in Florida, and you know, and, uh, or in the 7th District, um, here's a choice of somebody who's on the ballot and um, that I think is definitely um, better than the Republicans and the Democrats for sure, and and someone that's um, going to make people question different things, and I think someone that is also not going to hide from the debate when you know be be, be willing to um, discuss these ideas um, openly and transparently, and and to me that's the most important thing. I mean, whether you agree with someone completely or not, being able to have that debate I think is the uh, most important thing. I don't expect to agree with everyone 100%. And um, so uh, I'll say goodbye to you right after this interview. Um, good space guy. And so it's colonizespace.blogspot.com. Show them some support. Show yourself some support, um, you, you know, and, 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 and vote for an independence. Um, and show, show the media and the powers that be that we have, self, have high self-esteem, basically. Thank you very much, sir. Good night, Thomas, and thank you for the work you're doing. Appreciate it. Thank you.